Hi there. Um, thank you for joining me today. Uh, my name is uh, Yinka Akinsanya, and I'm a man who would normally not come on this platform to share a message as such as this, um, or even come on the platform or come on the social media in any circumstances. Um, I have not done so in many years because I believe that the Lord uh, does not want me to be out here. But today, uh, I felt a release that I needed to speak. Um, not just to one person, not to two people, but to the church in general and as many people who will listen to this. This message is strictly for the church, particularly women in the church and also uh, the church in general as a woman, uh, as a bride preparing herself before Christ. We are entering times where we don't know, we don't know what the future is uh, or the future holds, but we know that there will be worse things to come and things that will shake the church up because the church over the last few years has submitted itself into uh, adultery against Christ. Um, so there are bound to be consequences for a lot of the actions that the church in general has subjected herself to. Um, earlier this morning, I woke up from a dream. Uh, it will be worth saying that today is the 29th of December when I had this um, dream. Uh, God speaks in many ways to people. Uh, to me, he speaks in dreams and in visions and I see pictures, especially when I'm in prayer. Uh, people have different ways of hearing from God and seeing from God and I've documented over 50 ways that this could possibly happen, not just to me, but with just two or three other people that are liaised with that we prayed over it together. So I know that God does speak through dreams. Um, he has spoken to me in dreams, particularly um, to f for the favor of other people, people who were waiting for children, people who were waiting for a house or needed to know where the house is. And God gave me details specifically about cer uh, certain aspects of someone's house, uh, just for instance, in the last few years. And usually when I have dreams like this, when I see things like this, they tend to be accurate and spot on. I believe that this is from the Lord and I can I commend you to please um i would encourage you to please um take this on prayerfully and uh, whatever i say here take it take it to the lord be like the Bereans and study yourself and see if this is what god is telling you and if this message is for you i would like you and to invite you to go on a fast uh, before God to seek God's face and to uh, confess your faults before God and to turn your ways around okay and if this pertains to anyone that you know uh, I would ask you to be an intercessor but this message is for everybody including myself so early on this morning um, I felt a presence in my room a presence around me so it woke me up and I was in sort of a trance and I was praying against this presence um, and the Lord started to reveal to me the personality of this presence. So this presence, it's a spirit, a dormant spirit um, that is very defensive. It was just there and the spirit did nothing until I started to pray against it and until I started to pray for the people that God was showing me. So God will show me a picture of certain people and um, I can only reveal three of them to you because some of them are specific to other people. Um, but as I see this people in a dream, most of them are women, and as, does, as I start to pray for them, the spirit will then go on the defensive and attack me. And every time that happened, I felt choked. I felt like I couldn't speak, and I couldn't speak the name of Jesus. And I was disturbed, and I was oppressed, and I felt a huge sense of darkness around me in the room. So the purpose of this spirit is to destroy women, is to empower them in a way that is ungodly, and is to use them to destroy the head of the family units and then to infiltrate the church, which I believe has already happened. Uh, the spirit is deep seated in a very high place, exalted itself in a very high place in the church. Um, in the first instance, I saw um, a certain group of women and this women in the church who like glamour. They like to dress in a very high high fashion they like you know like a uh, very uh, appealing uh, you know glamorous clothes they like to dress in glamorous clothing and uh, they like beautiful houses they like to have the flashy cars and they they do their hair they like to you know show off the hairstyle and every time they do these things they're putting the glory on this object and i'm not here saying that it's wrong to have a good hairstyle or to have a nice car or to have a nice house or to dress in a very nice way um, but what i'm saying is that there is a certain group of people who have glorified this um 
uh, action or this uh, this lifestyle and i try to pray for them in the name of jesus and as soon as i was doing that i felt the spirit attack me um the second group that i saw was a very confusing one i saw in a bus or in a plane where people were trying to escape and the group of people i saw there were two um females at the back and one of them is a woman the other one is a woman appeared to be a woman um, but uh, used to be a man but identified as a woman or I saw a man who looked like a woman but now identifies back as a man again. It was very confusing to me in the dream. I didn't know what that meant. And as I zoomed out, it turned out there was a whole group of people in there. That particular picture was very, very uh, confusing to me. But as, as soon as I started to pray, the spirit attacked me again. And then uh, this happened again two more times. And, and then I started to see another group of people specific people and when i saw this woman i knew this woman in particular and what i saw was that they had a control over their marriage over their husbands um i saw so many different groups of women and some of them like i said i cannot share with everybody uh, but in every instance as soon as i start to pray for them the spirit would then attack me so i from what i remember this was at least five times and i think it was exactly seven times this happened overnight as i was waking up sleeping praying the spirit was on the attack in the last vision in the last picture that i saw when i thought that this spirit had left or the spirit has been overcome then i saw the face of the spirit the spirit was exalted in a very high place um where it was very lanky, very ancient, uh, very big smile, a gloating smile the spirit had. And it was a female, feminine looking spirit. Very strong, very knowledgeable, very wise, very cunning. Almost looked like a reptile, but with a face of an old woman. And it is very, it, it was a very prideful one. And it was almost like it was staying in a place of an angel that a place that an angel of a church should occupy so i started to pray um that god should send more angels to overwhelm it and that is when i started to experience a breakthrough in this dream and that was the last of it when i felt that there was a presence and there was a release of angels coming in to intervene on behalf of the church um and that is just about as uh, of what i've seen um but as i woke up i was quite confused about the second part of it um, so i prayed to god for more clarity and then i saw another vision as i was praying in this vision there was a car and the car was a toyota that was facing one way the face uh, the front of the car was inverted and it was like the car was driving forward with the backlights and the backlights could not see from the front so what i saw there was a car going in the right direction but with the wrong mindset or a car going in the wrong direction but the right way or the right aspect of it is pointed another way so this was in reference to the family i saw with the confusing aspect and i think this was to just explain the confusion that it is impossible to serve god and also embrace an ideology that god doesn't approve of so this is the message that i believe god was trying to say to the church so these three groups of women in the church or three groups of people in the church that need intercession and the first one uh, just to remind you of people who lead a glamorous lifestyle and have idolized it and second one are people who have embraced an idea that goes against god's ways and will not submit themselves to, themselves to god god likes to have people who align with him and the third group of people are controlling people and people who uh, women who have taken the place of the man in the household so here's what i believe god wants to say and this is the message that i received for people who fall into the first category um the scripture 
the obvious scripture that comes to mind is James uh, 1 Timothy 2 9 and which says in like manner also women adorn themselves in modest apparel and shamefacedness and sobriety not with broidered air or gold or pearls or costly array so this is i know some churches will take that to the letter and i know some churches will not make that much of a priority and that doesn't really make you less of a christian um, but it's important to understand the reason why paul is saying this is to avoid any form of pride creeping in and taking over god's place in our hearts this is a matter of the heart um, for the second group of people it's very straightforward where God stands on certain issues and we have to understand that the world is the world and the church is the church. There are There is an, a right way and a right attitude to people who want to embrace an identity that they may not want, they may not be born with. And when people are like that, your job is not to condemn them as a Christian. Your job is to love them like Jesus would have, just like he did with the woman of the well who had five husbands. Uh, in the past uh, or the woman who committed adultery even though men who committed adultery with her were there you have to understand the way that Jesus dealt with these people was not to condemn them it was to love them and it was to set them free and that's the way of God and God wants to deal with the heart God is not there to condemn us so we have to submit ourselves to God and let God know that this is how we feel this is who we are but we come to him as we are that he will turn us around because that is God's job to turn our sins around and to set us free but there is a right way and a right mindset around this but the, the job of the church in my opinion in what I believe that God is saying here is that we should intercede for people as such as this and the third group that I saw was um, and this actually came more as I was praying uh, was the women who were controlling the men uh, in Ephesians 5 or 6 um, God makes it clear that he wants the man to be the head of the home. That is the role of a man. God is not saying the man is more important than women, but what God is saying is that a man, a man's job is to be the priest of the household and a woman's job is to be um, the support of the household. Women know more than men. I'm a married man and I, I know that. Uh, however, it's not about knowledge. It's because God wants to protect the woman from pride once again. Because knowledge is something that can deceive us into thinking that we are God ourselves. And that is the whole idea. And that was the whole temptation around it in the first place. God wants to protect our women. So women who are very controlling, who... They are doing it. The revelation I got from this is that they are doing it out of fear. It's not something that I believe they're doing on purpose. It's something that they can't help and they need help in intercession and in prayer. So you are one of these three groups of people. What the Lord is saying is for you to come to him with your fault and be ready to confess it to him and he's ready to set you free as you enter a new year in 2024 the first part of your year if it's 21 days if it's 30 days if it's one week make a covenant with god to fast to mourn and to submit yourself to god so that he can deliver you from your sin you are not alone in the final picture that I got as I had all these revelations I saw as well um, when I was in the classroom as a teacher and um, I was checking my timetable and I was asking what we are supposed to do next and this is in response to the second um, group of people that I saw when I was confused and I saw something about Worsley in Manchester but that confused me a bit because it's saying two things that things could get worse or that we need to keep our eyes on a place called Worsley now finally and my departing message is to just show you this that we as the church are the bride of Christ and this offenses are things that we're doing to God and the first one is representing pride the second one is representing adultery in a sense where we're not aligned with God we're not aligned with the person who we're married to in Christ and the third one is to say that we are God 
instead of God being our God and we being submissive to him in terms of like us wanting to be in control. The church is not God. The church is God's own beloved that's who we are and that's the message that god wants us to know that you are loved by god but we have to submit all to him so that he can take his place in our lives i hope this has been a blessing to you it is not to condemn anyone and it is just to bring you and bring everybody right back to god i'm just a messenger here today uh, but i pray that there will be a change in all our lives and we can start to see the church moving forward in the right direction with God. Thank you. God bless you.